Hello everyone, my name is Alina Shotsova. I'm an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. And in today's video, I would like to talk to you, give you updates regarding um, DACA. Those people who have DACA, those people who potentially believe they may qualify for DACA, um, should watch this video. So just today, just literally um, about an hour ago, USCIS published guidelines on how they're going to deal with DACA cases after the litigation, after the federal litigation in the United States. And um, some of those um, updates, clarifications are very significant. Well, first of all, USCIS states that it will not be accepting any new DACA applications meaning that if you never had DACA before, but potentially you can qualify for it based on the guidelines, based on the law, and maybe you just never filed for it, maybe you were too late to file for it the first time, you were not sure if you would qualify, you did not have um, high school diploma or equivalent, maybe there were some other issues why you did not file. Unfortunately, right now, USCIS states they will not be accepting any new applications, okay? So no new applications. They do say that if the situation changes, for example, if a court orders USCIS to accept new applications, they will start accepting them, but not at this time. They will be accepting new uh, renewal applications. And here, pay good attention. So USCIS is going to accept renewal for the applications, DACA, um, applications for those who already were granted DACA. But you need to file that application now between 150 and 120 days before the expiration of your DACA document. This is very important. USCIS will be rejecting DACA renewals that will be filed earlier than 150 days before its expiration. Okay, that's number one. Number two, from now on, the DACA renewals are going to be granted for one year. And employment authorization documents will be granted for one year. For those of you who still have two-year grants and two-year DACA uh, related employment documents, you may still use them if the, such documents are going to be lost, uh, stolen, uh, somehow damaged. USCIS is going to replace them with the same two year validity documents, which is very, very important. But when the time comes to renew, they, you will be provided employment authorization and DACA grant for one year only. Now, the good news. The good news that USA has confirmed that they will be entertaining advanced parole requests. That's very, very important. So in certain situations, DACA recipients still will be able to receive advanced parole. But from what I understand, um, by reading this uh, guidance, it's going to be difficult to receive it. Why? Because USCIS emphasizes that the DACA-related advance parole will be given only for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. Okay? And then they provide certain examples. For examples, travel to support the national security interests of the United States travel to support U.S. federal law enforcement interests, travel to obtain life-sustaining medical treatment that is not otherwise available to the alien in the United States, and travel needed to support the immediate safety, well-being, or care of an immediate relative, particularly minor children of the alien. Usually, I would say, of course, that minor children of the alien are going to be in the United States with the alien. Perhaps they're referring to the situation when children traveled 
to some other country and got stuck there. God forbid something bad happened. And now Nellie seeks to travel to help their children. Ellen is a DACA beneficiary. Uh, otherwise, the advance parole is not going to be granted, it seems. In fact, USCIS says that even if you meet the guidelines, it's going to be on USCIS whether or not to give you advance parole. And this is very important. So it will be very difficult to receive it. Okay. Uh, still possible, which is good. So hopefully, if your case does not squarely uh, fall into these guidelines, but uh, you can still convince USAS officers that you do need to travel, your application for advanced parole may nevertheless be granted. And of course, advanced parole significance is not only in your freedom um, to travel, but it also brings you another important benefit. When a person who never had uh, who's never had um, valid entry into the United States, travels on advanced parole. Such a person usually is being paroled into the United States and that parole should count as legal admission for adjustment of status purposes. So that's a very important update. So basically, no new applications, renewals for one year only, Renewals have to be filed within a strict time frame between 150 to 120 days. And um, advanced parole will be very difficult to receive. So this is where we stand with DACA. There is one more update, but I'm going to record a separate video about that. That update relates to asylum and it's very important. Um, I'm going to record a video, I'll try to do it today and post it tonight. It's about the fact that USCIS now will be able to terminate, terminate asylum to certain people when they're filing for adjustment of status. It's a very important update, came out last week. And now guys, if you have some, um, if you have some questions, please, please, uh, this is a good opportunity for you to ask them so I'll be able to answer them. So good morning everyone, Walid, Joan, Mohammed, Leon. All right, so let me answer some of your questions. Thank you for joining me today. I would like if you are approved the I-134 family petition after interview, are you automatically green card holder or not? Well, you know that interview for adjustment of status, um, it, it depends basically. If you filed for your adjustment of status and you were adjustable and you received I-130 approval and I-45 approval, then you are a green card holder. You're going to receive your green card in the mail. But if you filed only I-130 petition for whatever reason, or if the government uh, decides that your I-130 is approved, but you cannot get a green card. Your application for adjustment of status cannot nevertheless be granted. There are situations like that. Then you will not be a green card holder. So it depends on what you filed and which notice you received. If you received notice of, for approval of I-130 only, that does not mean that your I-45 adjustment of status was approved. You need to wait for I-45 to be approved. Once that is approved, then you are you can consider yourself to be a green card holder, yes. I-751 pending for 25 months without any decision. Well, you have a stuck I-751 situation, very common. I wouldn't say that it's uncommon. There are several ways to address that. And one of those ways um, is to file for naturalization if you're eligible. And um, what happens is that when you file for naturalization of citizenship, the government, uh, you will request that the government makes decision on your I-751. And usually it helps to resolve the I-751 petition if you don't have any other issues like marriage fraud allegations. I have 20 years in the United States. Do I have a chance? Chance to get a green card, I guess. 
It depends. It depends on uh, if you have family members, how you, who are US citizens or lawful permanent residents, how you first entered the United States, if you ever had any uh, immigration issues. I have a very useful blog for you on my website, uh, www.shoutsova.com. It basically says um, if you are eligible for adjustment of status and how to self-check, okay? But there are some reliefs um, that are um, not so uh, commonly used. Let's say 245i exception, you may fall under that. Um, there are some derivative benefits that you could have, you can benefit from sometimes from so-called so rare uh, statutes. So I would suggest that you consult with an attorney you don't have to consult with a paid lawyer. Uh, you can try to obtain a consultation from legal services, immigration legal services, right? They, they sometimes provide free immigration related consultations and services. I would like to know if there is something coming up for TPS. Not at this moment. I do not have information about any news related to TPS, temporary protected status, at this time. What can, wait, 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 my questions, wait. What you can do to get your interview? I have tried six times to expedite and never accept. I'm waiting six years for my asylum interview. There is nothing you can do unless, to sub, unless um, you're submitting request and if you submitted your request and it hasn't been approved, there is really nothing you can do about this, unfortunately. Okay, because that's that's how it works. Some people have to wait for a very long time. If you're married to a U.S. citizen, which category are you in? Um, it depends. I mean, uh, which category for what? Uh, if you if you're married to a U.S. citizen and you can adjust your status you probably will be regarded as an immediate relative of the United States citizen, right? Uh, but if your marriage is less than two years old, if you're adjusting your status, uh, you're only going to get conditional residence opposed to um, residence without restrictions. If your marriage is um, more than two years old at the time of the adjudication of your adjustment of status application or immigrant visa petition. My mother is a green card holder. Can she petition my son, who is 31 years old, with mental disability? Um, green card holders can petition those who are the sons or daughters over 21 who are unmarried. Okay, If the person will be able to actually come to the United States if they're outside, depends on many other factors. And you mentioned that there is a mental disability. So I would suggest that uh, you or your mom consult with an attorney about the possibilities. And currently, there may be a big obstacle um, in the form of a public charge. Even though the rule is being stopped, the rule is being changed, but it's still out there in, in one or another form. Because basically, consulates, if, if the child is overseas, Counselors started, started to use different guidelines when they adjudicate uh, immigrant visa petitions even before February 24th, 2020, okay? The public charge guidelines were changed even before that date. And I'm talking about public charge rule. When one is trying to come to the United States, he or she has to prove that they will not be a burden for the United States, uh, like they don't have health issues that would require significant expense. Um, that may be the case that the government may be skeptical about how a person, your mom, is going to be able to afford treatment to, uh, to her child without government resources. It's just one of the aspects. I, mean, I cannot provide you a full consultation here, but it's something to keep in mind, okay? I'm based in Myanmar and want to work in the United States. Please help me on how to do this. Well, it's very hard because right now there are many people who are based in the United States and would like to work, but have a very high unemployment 
and uh, we have actually a ban by the President Trump on ban on employment related visas. So currently the situation for somebody who would like to come and work in the United States does not look so bright. Okay, but generally speaking, a person cannot just come and look for the job in the United States. A person has to be sponsored by the employer only um, and they have to qualify for the position. And usually employer has to show that employer could not find United States based workers for the same position. All right. So it's not that easy. Maybe some countries do offer an opportunity for you just to come and work if you would like but that's not the united states and especially not now my mother is a green card holder all right i guess i answered that question to the best of my ability i have waited for almost two years for uscis to make a decision on my case i did my fingerprints already for adjustment of status so what should i expect i wouldn't know what you can expect I wouldn't know why you had to wait for that long. I think the best person to discuss this situation would be your attorney, okay? Um, they probably would know why there is such a delay. Typically speak, normally speaking, typically what happens is that if you have an interview and you've never been in removal proceedings, there is no suspicion of marriage fraud or any type of fraud or your eligibility to adjust in general. Right after the interview, you're going to receive your green card and if that's not the case it means that something is different about your case so the best way to approach it is to speak with your attorney okay maybe there is some litigation regarding your eligibility so I, I unfortunately would not know but typically a person would receive the green card uh, in about two weeks after the interview sometimes it's several months if the officer needs to take the time verifying everything, if there are some documents missing. But typically, the decision comes pretty quickly. Well, thank you very much, guys, for joining me today uh, in the morning. And uh, now you know about DACA. For those of you who are planning on renewing DACA, that's a very, that should be very valuable information. Always, always check for updates at uscis.gov website. It's very important nowadays to check before you mail your applications as to what new rules, new fees, fees are changing. You probably, you are aware that fees are going to change starting October 2nd, 2020. Sometimes they change the filing address, instructions, new additions to the forms. Right now, tomorrow, a new addition for um, or a work permit form is coming out. So if you if your application for whatever reason is going to be rejected um, within this time of change, remember when you refile it, it can be rejected, let's say right now for some minor issue, but when you refile it, you need to make sure you're going to be refiling it using the current new forms editions. That's very important. All right, so thank you very much for joining me. And uh, I hope you all to be happy, healthy, and uh, I hope to see you soon.